In this video, we're going to continue looking at measurement and area of shapes, and today we're going to focus on the parallelogram. Our learning intentions are to understand that the area of a parallelogram is related to the area of a rectangle, and to also be able to find the area of a parallelogram. And we'll know we've succeeded when we can understand how rectangle and parallelograms areas are related, and of course, when we can find the areas of a parallelogram. So our key ideas today Just to remind ourselves that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So what does all that mean? It means that the opposite sides are of the same length and opposite angles are also equal. Again, what does that mean? Well, let's look at this diagram. So a quadrilateral, remember, just means a shape with four straight sides. And we have two pairs of equal sides. And we can see that by the little markings. So this little marking here and this little marking here are indicating that those two sides that are opposite to each other, uh, which we call parallel, are the same size in length. And again, we've got the double marking here and the double marking here that indicate the same. So parallel lines means they run equal to each other, equal distance from each other the whole time, uh, and they're opposite basically. And then the opposite angles, again, means the same thing. So here we have an angle that we're representing down here, and its opposite one over here is the same. We're representing that with the A uh, degrees mark. And in a similar way, this one here that we're marking with a B and its opposite one here with a B are also equal. There's some other things we can talk about in relation to parallelograms and their angles and so forth, and quadrilaterals in general. Uh, but we won't confuse ourselves too much today. We'll just focus on the fact that it has two pairs of parallel sides and also has two pairs of equal angles. How do we find the area? Well, the area of a parallelogram is found in a similar way to the area of a rectangle. We take a base measurement and multiply that by a height measurement. Okay, so in the picture here, we have the base which we have just said is one of the sides. We often choose a convenient side, such as the one on the bottom, and the height. Now, the height is something we've got to talk a bit more about. We write the formula as area equals base times height, or B times H, or we can abbreviate that into a more algebraic form as area equals BH, remembering that B times H, we can get rid of the multiplication sign and just put those two... Uh, letters next to each other, it still means multiplied. Let's talk a little bit more about that base and height. So the base is one of the sides. Again, it doesn't technically matter which one you choose. Normally choose one that's convenient for you to look at. But the height, now that is the important part. The height has to be a measurement that is perpendicular to the side that you choose to be the base. So perpendicular again means has to be at 90 degree angle. So we see that in this diagram here. Here is our base. We've decided to use this bottom one. So our height is this measurement here. It is perpendicular. It is at 90 degrees to the base. We could have shown it at any point along the base so long as it was at 90 degrees. It really doesn't matter. But of course, it has to go across to the opposite side. We couldn't take a base measurement here, for example, even though that would be perpendicular the measurement does not go all the way up to the, uh, the opposite side, the parallel side. We could draw it there, so we can technically draw our height and take the measurement from here, but so long as we go the full length. So we can extend our uh, base out, and we can say, yep, that is perpendicular, and this could also be our height measurement but we would make sure we didn't include this extra dotted line here as part of our base measurement. Again, one more time, the important part is your height measurement has to be perpendicular, so 90 degrees, and it has to go from base to the matching parallel line. So here's two other examples of parallelograms where we have a base and a height drawn. So in the first one, we have our base here, and we've got a height measurement. So the height is being shown as being perpendicular 
All right, so at 90 degrees and going from one side at the base across to its matching point on the opposite parallel line. The second example uh, looks more confusing just because the way it's rotated. But again, here is our base measurement, all right? And again, this is one where they've shown the height outside of the shape just by extending the base along so that they could get a perpendicular line, all right? But again, it goes from one side of the... Um, from one baseline, sorry, to the opposite parallel line. So we could have shown our um, our base in here, for example, okay? So long as it was, in fact, perpendicular, we could have shown the, sorry, not the base, the height at any point, so long as it's perpendicular to whichever line we choose at our base. So don't let those confuse you. Okay, it's time to head off and look at the questions. Question two simply asks you to find the area of the parallelograms. The first example here is very straightforward. We've got the measurements provided. So this 10 must be our base and this five must be our height. We know that is the height because it is perpendicular to the base. Okay, so we work out a formula, area equals base times height, which in this case is going to be 10 times 5, which of course is going to be 50. Don't forget the unit of measurement meters and the square indicating area. The second one's a little bit more tricky um, because we need to decide which is the base and the height. We've got three measurements. So let's look for what measurements we have that are perpendicular. So if we look at this 2.7 here, do we have a measurement provided that is perpendicular? So that would mean that would probably have to go something across like that for it to be perpendicular. Now we don't have a measurement like that and it's not gonna be easy to work out. But if we look at this two, we have a measurement that is in fact perpendicular. So if we extend out that base line, this 4.5 is perpendicular to the two. So we can say that this 2 is our base and this 4.5 is our height. So again, area equals base times height, which in this case would be 2 times 4.5, which is going to be 9. In this case, it's centimetres and square as well. So again, don't let those sort of ones trick you. Look for the base and its perpendicular height measurement. Question three, uh, these sort of parallel, sorry, parallelograms are on one centimeter grids. And again, these are not drawn to scale. You need to find the area. So it hasn't given you specific height and base measurements, but it has told you that each of these little blue squares is one centimeter by one centimeter. So if we have a look, we can work out what's what. So let's take the bottom line as our base. So we're gonna call that B. And we can see that it is one, two, three squares across, which means that has to be three centimeters in length. Now we want to work out our height. So we need a line that is perpendicular to that. And I'm just gonna take this nice blue line that goes straight up here from one side to the opposite side. So that's my perpendicular line. And it's going up one square, two squares. So my height is going to be equal to two centimeters. So now that I've got some measurements, I can put those in my formula. So again, area equals base times height. I'm going to write it this way uh, this time around, which is equal to three times two. Now, if you are writing it in this format, don't accidentally write, uh, when you get to the second line here, don't write equals three, two because you've written the number 32, all right? Once you substitute the numbers in, you do have to put the multiplication symbol back in so that you don't get confused. So either way, whether you write BH or B times H, once you got to numbers, make sure you put the, uh, the multiplication symbol back in. But anyway, let's continue. So three times two, of course, is six. And we know it's centimeters because that was written up there. So it's six centimeters squared. Question four, we get into a worded problem. So the floor of an office space is in the shape of a parallelogram. The longest sides are eight meters and the perpendicular distance between them is four meters. 
find the area of the office floor. So again, we're looking for keywords and we're gonna draw a picture to help make it clear what we're doing. So we straight away see this word parallelogram, we know what shape we're drawing, which is quite surprising considering we're doing a topic on parallelograms. The longest side is eight meters, and then it says a perpendicular distance is four meters. Well, that's great because we know that we need one side that's gonna be our base, and we need one other side that is gonna be our height, and our height has to be perpendicular. So we've got all the important words there that tell us what it's gonna look like. So let's draw it. Again, doesn't have to be perfect as long as we get the general gist of it. This is gonna be our base, which is going to be equal to eight meters. And then the perpendicular distance between them will be this line here, perpendicular distance, it says is four meters, which will be our height. So now that we've got our drawing, we, we can clearly see that we've got all the measurements we need. We can simply work out the area. So again, area equals base times height, which is equal to eight times four, which is equal to 32 meters squared. Question six says, find the base of a parallelogram when its area is 50 centimeters square and the height is five. So again, I'm gonna draw a diagram to help me understand what information I have. So if I draw a basic parallelogram, what I know is the area equals 50 centimeters squared. It's told me the height. So let's just draw in a height line. There it is, is five centimeters. What I don't know is this base value. I'll do it as a lowercase b, sorry. So the base is my unknown. So let's think about my equation. Uh, the equation for area, of course, is area equals base times height. Let's put in what we know. So we know that 50 is the area equals, we don't know the base multiplied by the height we do know. So we need to think about how can we change this equation to work this out, to work out what the base is. So really what we're saying is what value of B multiplied by five will give us 50. So again, I can rely and fall back onto my times tables because it's pretty obvious that 10 times five is 50. So what I'm saying is my base equals 10. Don't forget the unit of measurement. If I'm not sure, I just wanna be really positive about that. Let me redo my equation. So area equals base times height. So I now say the base is 10 multiplied by five as the height that I've given, which equals 50 centimeters squared. And that 50 centimeters equals what I was given in the question. So I've just proven that my answer is correct. Question seven. A large wall in the shape of a parallelogram is to be painted with a special red paint, which costs $30 per liter. Each liter of paint covers 10 meters squared. The wall has a base length of 20 meters and a height of 10 meters. Find the cost of painting the wall. So we've had a similar question to this when we were talking about rectangles and squares. Um, so the ideas are similar, but we're obviously dealing with a parallelogram. So as always, let's draw a diagram. So I'm gonna start with a parallelogram and the information I have is that the base is of 20 meters, all right, so this is our base, and it has a height of 10. Now it doesn't specifically say it's, um, it's perpendicular, but we can fairly safely assume that that's what the question meant. So I'm just gonna draw it in. So the height is 10 meters, and I'm gonna put the H in brackets there. So with that information, we can work out the area. So area equals base times height, which is equal to 20 times 10, which is equal to 200 meters squared. So we've got the area, but now we need to work out how much paint we need. So if we have an area of 200 meters, but the paint will cover 10 meters, we basically need to say how many lots of 10 are in 200, which of course is a division question. So if we do 200 divided by 10, well, we get nothing to start with, and then we get 
10 into 20 goes two times. 10 into zero, of course, is zero. We've got nothing left over, so we have 20. And again, that's a pretty obvious one anyway. So we're going to say that we need 20 um, litres of paint, right, for this particular wall. But it actually asks us to find the cost. So we have one more step. It said to us that each litre is $30. If we need 20 of them, we need to find the total cost. So that's now a multiplication question. So we have 20 times 30. So zeros and zeros, etc. We'll put a zero straight away and just go straight to our 10. So 3 and 0 is 0. 3 and 2 is 6. So that's 600. But of course, we're talking dollars. So our final answer being a word of question should be something like the cost will be dollars six hundred to cover the wall of area that's the worst area I've ever drawn sorry about that 200 meters squared it's nice to put a few extra bits of information in there the most important part is the cost because that's what the final question actually asked for but doesn't hurt to show that we've done all the working out and more importantly, that we know that we're talking about the area as well. So a nice, complete answer there. Now, question nine. Question nine asks you to talk about how the relationship between a rectangle and a parallelogram. Um, I can't really show you how to do this question without just giving you the answer, because there's really only one answer. Um, but what I want you to think about, and you might need to go back and do some reading early in the chapter, etc., is if you have a rectangle, all right, like that there, this is its height and this is its base. We normally refer to them in rectangle as length and width, all right, but really it's the same thing. Now, if you took that rectangle and you pushed it over a bit, you slanted it, you end up with a parallelogram, all right? This would be its width and this would be its length still. But if we want to find the area of that parallelogram, we don't go by this width measurement here. We need a height measurement, right? And this height measurement is not the same number as this width line. It is not the same thing. We have technically squashed this down a bit, okay? So take that on board Go and do some of your own reading if you need to and see if you can come up with some sort of explanation that explains why um, the parallelogram and the re rectangle are related and helps you to answer question nine. It is a challenging question. It does uh, make you think a little bit. And question 10 is also one that I can't uh, really show you without giving you the one answer, okay? But it asks you to look at this sort of picture and talk about how the green triangle inside the uh, parallelogram are related, right? And what fraction that green triangle is compared to um, the whole area of the parallelogram. Again, you need to know a little bit about finding the area of a triangle, which we may or may not have done at the time of you watching this particular video but it's something that you could go back and do a little research of your own about. Uh, there is a clear relationship between the area of a triangle and the area of um, a parallelogram, okay? So once you understand that, this question is actually quite easy, all right? Uh, but go off and do some research if you can and see if you can come up with an answer for this question. And that is all the questions that you need to do for this particular section. So as always, go back and re-watch the ones that you need to. Have a go first if you haven't already. Um, and if you really get stuck, ask for some help.